yeah, it's a mind game with the defender, but half the time they're defeated before you even get on the field. What's going on, Team Twitter? I hope you're all super well. It is Sunday. I played my game yesterday, and if you didn't catch that one, you're going to want to go back and watch it. I'll give you a couple seconds. Okay, you've gone and watched it, haven't you? Now, I scored a hat-trick in that game, and man, you just can't complain with a hat-trick. I scored my last two goals later on in the game, but still, you've got to put the ball in the back of the net. They were both two composed finishes, which is what I'm stoked with. I didn't rush them. You've got to go watch them to understand what I'm talking about. But today, I had a coaching session this morning. Didn't film that. I haven't been doing a whole lot simply because I played 90 minutes, so I've got to relax my body a little bit. I still want to get down to the park and do a little bit of a session, nothing too intense, just to kind of get the muscle moving, as well as continue on with this program that I want to get to you guys. So yeah, that's about it. I'm pretty sure I got concussed yesterday. Here's a flashback to that clip, and man, it actually really hurt. So yeah, I went to pick up the ball because as soon as I fell over, I knew it was going to be a penalty. So I had to get that ball because I wasn't letting anyone else take it. So I fall over, I go to get up to pick up the ball and he just comes through and smashes me in the head. And last night I stayed over at Lucy and man, the back of my head was just in so much pain. Thankfully, it's feeling a bit better now, but phew, that wrecked. Now something else I want to talk about today is how you can beat defenders without even beating them. Just by beating them, by being in their heads. This is all about the mindset and that sort of thing. I've learned it from another player. I've also seen it through boxing. There's a number of different ways I've seen this put to use and I've started to do it now and I think it's just helping me more and more. So I'm gonna head off to the park now. I'm going down with Sam and Jack maybe. We'll get a light session in there, probably just a few dribbling drills. And yeah, so we'll head down there, so. Sam! What is the plan for today? What are we up to? Uh, we're just gonna get into some dribbling. Nice. Uh, get that done, film a little bit of it, you know. You know how it goes. Easy stuff, so we've already done it. It's done, and it's night time now as well. Like nearly, it's 7.10. Something like that, something like that. Yeah, we've just been mucking around a little bit after the session once it got dark. But yeah, here's a little bit of what we did. A few little drills that you guys can do at home. Actually, I'm only gonna show them one. Because we filmed, what, like seven today or so? Something like that. Yeah, so make sure you check them out. We don't have Finn here. Finn already left us. You know. But yeah, it was good. Here's the drills. Look who it is. Finno! Finno! Is that... Oh, no, I thought it was Jack getting dropped off. Long time no see. How you going? I don't have the real footage of the drills. I don't have them on the SD card right now. So that will be in tomorrow's video. This is a montage from like the future, basically. So I'm back from the park. I've had to rush back because Dad, who's behind the camera, came back for the game with Claire, who's in the other room, from a rugby league match, wasn't it? It was a rugby league. So, George, did you win? No. This team sucks. We got He's dressed good. up in our out, in our St. George outfits. For nothing. And we lost. For nothing. So, I've rushed back. This is what I'm cooking up. In here, we've got, what, corn, onions, zucchini, beans, carrot. Is that a, That's about it. Vegetables, it? Yeah, extraordinary. Vegetables. And then also we're going to put in some tunas, which we have here. Tuna Straight out of the brown. ocean, from the ocean to you, fresh as anything. That's it. And then we also got pasta, which we're baking oh, there. Also fresh. Fresh, fresh from, not from the ocean, maybe from <laughs> the farm or something. But yeah, we're making tuna pasta. This is one of your favorites, isn't it? It is. I love tuna pasta. The great thing about it is with the pasta and then the vegetables and everything, we get eight meals at least. At least, and, and you so know the really great thing about it? What? I don't have to cook. Oh, well, Neither does Claire. Yeah. The great thing is, I get eight meals out of it, which means I probably get four lunches or so. Yeah. Or like four dinners if Dad and Claire go out, and it just makes everything easier, and I get the carbs, the proteins, the vegetables, everything that is needed. Okay, here's my feedback about yesterday's game. Four things. Count them. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Firstly... Firstly, your three goals, what did they have in common, do you reckon? 
Oh, what's the word? The word is composure. Composure, exactly. Yeah. You were really Patience. calm with the penalty and the other two shots. You didn't rush it, you didn't spray it away. It's good. That was the first thing I noticed. Uh, the second thing I noticed was your speed has improved. Massively. Big shout out to Clayton. And the thing I really notice is because you're faster, it changes your confidence as well. So you're more willing to chase down the ball because you know that you're likely to beat the guys. Mm. So it kind of helps all around that extra speed. Yeah. Uh, what was the third thing? Oh, you made a lot of really good runs. Attacking runs where you do those curved runs, staying on side. I said that before the game. I said, well, you haven't seen the vlog yet, but I said my focus is making those runs and, you know, getting practice with it, it's going to help in the future, whether I play as a winger or even as a 10 in the future. Absolutely, it makes no difference. With 10, you're coming in at a different angle. Exactly. But, but it's incredibly good practice because, you know, one of the biggest things about that is that you're practicing staying on side. And it doesn't matter whether you're playing in Champions League or bloody Division 10 of Australia, you're still practicing the same thing, making that angle run, staying on side. It doesn't matter who you're playing against, you practice that. Yeah. So I thought that was really impressive. Your shooting's good, and when you're not, it's not so good. Yeah, that's it, why. Yeah, well, I did. Now, I said that exactly on the Friday vlog. I said, I need my shooting to be better, which is why I'm going to the park. And yeah. you saw I missed out two, three weeks of shooting. Yeah. How many goals did I score? One. One. And so when I was doing the shooting, I scored like nine or something. Yeah, well, you probably, if you were really, if you were really at your best with shooting, you would have scored five or six yesterday. Yeah, but you know, you've got to put the practice in it. It shows, I put the practice in, I scored three. Absolutely, but it's, I find it really interesting that it's so focused and immediate that if you practice shooting for two or three weeks in a row, it immediately gets better. Yeah. But it's also, that doesn't surprise me. What surprises me is that if you don't do that for two or three weeks, it drops off. Yeah, exactly. It's not some. It's not like fitness where you can get away with it for a week or two. You got to be grinding all. I think you got to do a shooting session at least every week. Yeah, that's the aim. At least one, probably two. Yeah. Here we got the end product. It's done. It looks good. I'm starving. Are we all starving? Yeah, look good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I've had my shower. I'm just about to head off to bed. It's in the title of this video. It's pretty much what it's all about is how you can beat a defender without even touching the ball. I want to briefly touch on how you can mentally beat the defender so that when you do get the ball, they're scared and you have the upper hand because you're confident in your ability to beat them. Now, this all started, like I said before, when I watched a clip of Daniel Arzani doing a little interview. Let's get a flash to that. Yeah, it's a mind game with the defender, but half the time they're defeated before you even get on the field. So he says there that the defender is beaten before you even get on the field. Now, this really comes when you have a name to yourself. So if you're someone like Messi and you're up against him as a defender, you're real scared. You're like, I don't know what he's going to do. I've seen so much footage on him and I just don't know how to defend him. So already you've lost that battle because when you come up 1v1 against Messi, he's just going to go past you because you're already in that mindset of I've lost. So how can we as players who don't have that stature of Messi and the name like that actually beat a defender mentally? Well, for me, it goes back to a boxing thing where Mike Tyson said this. I walk around the ring, but I never, I never take my eyes off my opponent. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom. And one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. And as if he's not afraid, but he already made that mistake when he, when he looked down for that one-tenth of a second. That's a little bit different because you're eyeing him down, you're trying to get the upper hand there, but it's still somewhat similar because you're trying to show that you're confident. If you can hold eye contact with a defender and he breaks eye contact with you without trying to be intimidating, you don't want to start a fight, you just hold that eye contact just to let him know, I'm here. You need to make sure you're confident in your ability. The last couple of weeks, I am full of confidence. Like Dad said before, that may be because of the speed that I am gaining, but I just feel like I can almost get past anyone. And it was pretty funny on the weekend, the right back of their team said to me during the game, Oh, you're a great player. I didn't see you last year. Where have you come from? I was like, I said, oh, just been over at Crawley Town under 23s. Do you know him? And he said, yeah, you're really quick as well. I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. And I didn't bother saying anything else. Already by him knowing that I was at Crawley Town, he's a little bit nervous about that. And so when I go up against him 1v1, he's on edge. And you know, it depends how you want to play it. Some people are great at, you know, giving a little bit of back chat, not too much. 
because you need to stay focused on the game. Above anything, you need to be aware of your positioning. Do you need to make a run inside? Do you need to make a run outside? But maybe you gain confidence and feel you can get the upper hand on your defender just by saying a little something here and there. The other week when I was playing against Brookvale, the guy gave me a ton of space. And so I shot and then afterwards I said to him, man, really, you're gonna give me that much space? And then he laughed and then said something to me. And so then when I received the ball the next time, I said, come on, man, let's go, let's go, run at me. And so I was talking to him during my action. I arrive and as you can see, I do my scissors and get past him and he elbows me. So I'm mentally inside his head. Now he just wants to hit me, which look, it's great if I can get a 1v1 against him because he's not going to be concerned about the ball. He wants to take me out, which means he's going to dive in. He's not going to be thinking properly and mentally I've won that battle. So look, you need to find what works for you. Maybe you don't say anything. You just hold eye contact with your defender. Maybe you need to do a little bit of talking. Maybe you need to show something and then say something to the defender. Football is a mental game as well. Watching that clip of Daniel Azani saying that, he's a year younger than me and I can learn from him. And I went, wow. That is so interesting. So that's how I approach every game now. Can I mentally beat the player before the game even starts? Or during the game, can I get the upper hand? So yeah, that's my little tip. I hope it helps. Now it's World Cup final tomorrow morning at 1am and I was going to stay up and watch it. Dad got a little bit annoyed because he wasn't going to stay up till 1am and he's like, I really want to watch it with you. It only happens every four years. I was like, man, I want to watch it live though. And he convinced me to watch it in the morning with him after the game is finished, which look, I'm not a massive fan of, but I guess I got to watch it with my dad. So yeah, Croatia, France, you guys will obviously know the result while I'm recording this. Look, I think France are too hard to go past. Although Croatia are the underdog and can play some good football, I just think France are going to be too good. Their team is just full of amazing players. And how's Mbappe? Is he 18 or 19 years old starting in a World Cup final? It's crazy. But we can't look at that as young players. That's a one in a billion thing. If you're 19 and you see Mbappe there and then get discouraged, it just doesn't make sense to me. Don't get discouraged because someone that is amazing is starting. Just respect it and get back on your grind. So I'm going to end it there. Team Tweety, I'm signing out. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Subscribe to you. Enjoy the journey. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.